Dressed this way, she's a Navy Wayne. But beneath that uniform, she is the Wonder Woman doll. And now you can create your own Wonder Woman adventures with these other dolls. Major Steve Trevor, Nubia Wonder Woman Super Foe. Gotcha, Major. Wonder Woman, hurry! I'll save you, Major, as soon as I talk to you loose Wonder Woman, Major Steve Trevor, and Nubia doll sold separately. Hey guys, it is Tristan with Nerdette's Newsstand, and I want to talk about this. I've gotten a couple comments talking about the character known as Nubia. Now, there is going to be an OGN coming out in February. This is not a YA novel, it's an OGN. Regardless, it is still coming out from DC Comics, so this brings up the point of Nubia. Now, I actually seen this announced about a week ago, and I kind of knew these videos were coming, and that's okay, I actually get it. So, um, I want to talk about that, I want to talk about Nubia's history, and why Nubia in and of itself is not a woke character, she is not a diversity character, and what DC has done to her. Her, looking over this interview is make her exactly that anyways so i want to talk about nubia i want to talk about something lauren chen said also um just mentioning it because i put it on my thumbnail now i do love lauren chen i'm not sending any hate whatsoever so she was just something off the cuff she said in her video about this that i kind of want to address it was very weird to me so let's talk about nubia first and then we'll get to the OGN. Nubia first appeared um, in Wonder Woman 204 in 1973. She's been around nearly 50 years. She even had her own Barbie doll, as you could have seen in the beginning. She was actually supposed to show up on Linda Carter's show um, in the 70s as Nubia, as the black Wonder Woman, but that didn't end up working out. So let's talk about her history a little bit. And the reason why I'm going through this is because I want to show you the drastic change they are doing to a character for this OGN. I want to show you who she was as comparatively to who she is going to be. She was originally made of clay, just like Wonder Woman. Uh, yeah, well, Wonder Woman was made of a lighter clay, and she was made of, uh, they called it black clay, but, you know, gotta remember the time, 1973. So she was then brought to life by Aphrodite, the same way Wonder Woman was, but unfortunately didn't get exactly the same powers because she was then kidnapped by Ares. So Nubia was brainwashed by this special ring that she wore, she was also raised by Ares. Eventually, though, Diana was able to use her bracers and reflect the sun, kind of expanding that ring to fall off of her finger and um, keep her from, you know, having any more brainwashing. She broke this spell and then Nubia turns around, realizes what happened, takes on Ares and even takes over part of his army. And in the process, um, shortly thereafter, she learns that Queen Hippolyta herself was um created her as wonder woman's twin sister now post crisis nubia has an enchanted sword and a set of armor that allows her to travel in between these mythical realms specifically hades but even so she also has really like a really awesome power called cold sight which basically if you think about it, it's medusa she turns anybody that she looks at if she wants to into stone I am going to tell you about her combat history, which has over 3,000 years of experience. She is also proficient in Themos gear and combat art, hand-to-hand -hand combat, weapons combat. She has superhuman strength, immortality, stamina, speed, superhuman senses, agility, because, of course, she is an Amazon, and she is on par be with Wonder Woman because they are twins. So, of course, she has all of the gifts of the Amazons. She got all of the gifts from the five Amazon goddesses. Obviously, Artemis, Athena, uh, Hestia, Aphrodite, and Demeter. Now, her weaknesses are the same as the other Amazons. Again, you getting this process here? It's because she's an Amazon. Bullets, projectiles. If she's beheaded, she dies. Same as all. 
Now, to be technical, that pre-crisis newbie I talked about um, that was, you know, raised by Aries doesn't exist anymore because of the collapse of the multiverse. But <laughs> that, that, that gets too long and that story's for another day. So um, we also had her in Tom Taylor's Injustice series where she went up against Wonder Woman and the Mascara then named her the new Wonder Woman after Diana threw in with um, Superman and his evil regime. So, this is Nubia. Can you point out, and I went through a couple different versions, at least three. Um, she's also on, I think, Earth 22, where we have um, the black Superman also. So she's on that Earth too. We have plenty of different versions of this character. Show me one that's woke. I'm waiting. Right, but you're going to make one, so we'll get to that. What I want to talk about when it comes to Lauren Chen, um, and then we'll get to the graphic novel. She she did a great video, don't get me wrong, but she said all characters need to be relatable. Um, I actually completely disagree with that. Uh, you need to love some characters, hate some characters, relate to some characters, empathize with some characters, sympathize with some. You need to have disdain for your enemies and love for your heroes. So if all characters were 100% relatable, things would get really boring really quick. So I'm not going to pick. That's silly going on. This is really what I wanted to address. And it was a very... Mm, off the cuff comment. She said, uh, the way you make these characters good and show commonality is by showing a black woman has the same struggles and same issues that a white man does. Hmm. Same feelings, I'm sorry, as a white man does. I misquoted. By letting white men see themselves in a black woman's journey. Now, here's the thing. I call BS out on the left all the time, and I guess it's only fair to do the same thing on the right. Not everything. Every character has to be compared to white men. Come on. That's silly. No one, no one, I'm telling you right now, no white man is going to be able to understand every struggle a woman goes through, whether it's being cat called by creepers or um the way a woman knows when their hair stands up on the back of their neck when they're walking home at night um you also don't know what it feels like to have a period just saying <laughs> you also don't understand what it's like to go through 200 different outfits and then pick out the first one come on we don't all have to feel the same just like i don't understand what a my, white man goes through when um, struggling with, you know, deciding to show emotions or be more impulsive, having to answer that dreaded question, like, do I look fat in this? The answer is always no, by the way. Just wanted to let you know. Or even something as simple as registering for the draft. That is why storytelling is so important. It builds those bridges we can understand and then, you know, look up to each other, just like yin and yang are supposed to be, the feminine and the masculine. So I wanted to talk about that. No hate towards Lauren Chen. I just thought it was very weird that everything had to be compared to a white man. It's just, mm, okay. Anyways, let's talk about what this person said now that we are finally through what Nubia was. Hmm. The importance of centering a black, capital B, I get that capital B, Mm, woman in a major comic book universe is the same importance as centering her, centering us anywhere. Now, this is McKinney. She is the author that is talking. Black women and girls are always, always, always the victim. I mean, uh, relegated to the margins in this sort of thing. We're an afterthought. Nobody ever looked. I can guarantee you if somebody looked at Nubia and said you are an afterthought, they probably would have been headed beheaded just saying left behind not viewed as important until we're tired of being ignored and um express that justifiable frustration and then we're called angry right i mean i would call it angry when or i wouldn't call it angry when um nubia wasn't left behind in injustice and she took over all of the Mosquera as their leader hmm you getting the point here? This is nothing like the original character. Now, I am not the first person to call everything woke. I actually am one of the more reserved ones. But this is ridiculous. You are seeing the destruction of 50-year-old characters done over and over again for an OGN that won't sell. 
Okay, so let's see what she said about can you be a hero if society doesn't see you as a person? Who the fuck doesn't see you as a person? Be real. God, that's so stupid. Nubia has always been a little bit different. As a baby, she showcased Amazonian-like strength. Probably because she's Amazonian. Just saying. Just putting that out there. By pushing over a tree and rescuing her neighbor's cat. Well, that's cute at least. But despite having similar abilities, the world has no problem telling her that she's no Wonder Woman. I mean, she is though. She's Wonder Woman's twin sister. So, no, she's not Wonder Woman. She's Nubia! And even if she was, they wouldn't want her. Why? Why? Because she's black? Because if that's your fucking answer, you're a little racist here. Every time she comes to the rescue, she's reminded me of how people see her as a threat. Well, you know, when Diana first showed up, that's kind of what they thought of her, too, right? We just got a Scott Snyder one in um, Wonder Woman 750 showing uh, her as the first superhero. Nobody understood what she was. What about Superman when he first showed up? This alien from Krypton who had heat vision and who could, you know, breathe ice. Yeah, they saw him as a threat, too. Quit playing. And my moms do their best to keep her safe. Oh, uh, yeah, I don't care if she has two moms. Of course she does. She's Amazonian. But Nubia can't deny the fire within her, even if there's a little awkward about it sometimes. Even if it means people assume the worst. What's the worst, honey? It, it, keep going. And when Nubia's best friend, Keisha, is threatened by a boy who thinks he owns the town, I bet he's white. You want to bet me five motherfucking dollars that he's white. Nubia will risk it all. Her safety, her home, her crush on that cute boy in English class to become the hero society tells her she isn't. I'm actually extremely surprised in this instance that she's straight. Just saying. She has a crush on a boy. That's great. She has a crush on a girl. I don't care. I'm just saying when it comes to this type of story, I'm very surprised. What? is this this isn't nubia that's what's so irritating about it this isn't the character she says in nubia real one we focus on a coming of age of a black girl with her black family and her black friends even her crush is black (laughs) what can you imagine can you fucking imagine if i was writing a story about cassandra sandsmark um, you know, or Donna Troy as a white Wonder Woman saying, you know what? Her best friend's white. Her parents are white. Her two dads are white. Her crush is white. Can you fucking imagine? Like, I would be the most racist piece of shit on the world, but it's okay because you're black? That's fucking ignorant. Huh, I've done a lot of yelling today. I should probably chillax. <laughs> My blood pressure is probably through the roof. Anyways, this is ridiculous. Quit ruining our characters. You have done it time and time and time and time and time and time and time of fucking again. This isn't Nubia. You know nothing of this character. You know nothing of her legacy. You know nothing of how she is, how she acted, or who she was. You picked her because she was black. That's it. Anyways, let me know what you guys think about this, and I will see you in the next one. I promise I won't scream in that one either. Okay, I can't make that promise. Anyways, see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Hey, guys. I want to give a huge shout-out to my Patreon and subscribe stars. You guys literally make this channel possible. Huge thank you to Cage the Mick. Robert McTwiz, Black Knight Fool, Brucey, Chris Z, David L, David Rafford, Jeffrey Allen Carnes, Mighty Balls, Mike Buckner, Mizen Barbosa, Ruscar, Ryan Decker, Robert Hoffman, and Doc Holiday. You guys are absolutely amazing, and thank you so much for all your support. Don't forget on the way out to like as always if you enjoy the content and hit subscribe and i will see you in the next one bye bye